So we want to talk to you about the second coming of Christ. Now we want to make clear right at the onset of this message that the second coming of Christ is not the rapture of the church. Do you hear what I said? The second coming of Christ is not, is not the rapture of the church. A lot of folks today think that the coming of the Lord is the rapture. Makes it very clear in the scripture that the rapture of the church will be the Lord coming back in the middle of the air. He's not coming back to the earth. And what we're talking about in this message is the second coming of Christ when he comes back to the earth. The next three events to take place we see in Revelation chapter 19. The first event takes place in verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice, give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And it was granted to her that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the right, fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. This is the first event to take place, not the rapture of the church. The wedding is the first thing to take place. Many are called, few are chosen. The next event to take place is in verse 9. And he saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. He saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Notice the difference. They were not chosen to the marriage feast. They were called. Many are called. Few are chosen. It's like a man out of many women chooses a bride. The Lord is choosing a bride out of the many of his people. And it's those that have been faithful. He's not going to be married to the unfaithful. Called, chosen, and faithful. So the next event to take place in God's plan of the ages is the wedding those that will become one with the Lord. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Then what will follow will be the marriage feast or the supper of the Lamb. That's kind of like a wedding reception after the wedding. And then the third event will take place. And this is the coming of the Lord. Now, I need to make mention to you, before the marriage supper of the Lamb can take place, there needs to be the rapture of the church. So in between the marriage and the marriage supper of the Lamb will be the rapture of the church. So if you want to know where the rapture fits in, the church will be caught up in the middle in between the two events. All right? The devil wants people to think that the rapture could be any day now. It can't be. There has to be a falling away first, and that man of sin must be revealed, which makes very clear in the Scripture. If you go to Revelation chapter 12, you'll see that the devil has come down unto the earth having great wrath, and it says that the woman, the church, is still here. God's going to protect the church from the face of the serpent for three and a half years. All right. So now let's go on to the message, the second coming of Christ. 
We're going to begin our reading in verse 11, chapter 19 of Revelation, verse 11. This is probably one of the most important messages you've ever heard in your entire life. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. The armies which were with him. Did you get that? The armies which were in heaven. They're already in heaven. They followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying, To all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Now, you know that I have been sharing with you much concerning the mark of the beast, the very chip, and how all these things, the smart cities, how it's all playing together. But I'll tell you folks, I couldn't go to sleep last night. I was up all night long in probably 6, 7 o'clock this morning. Finally went to sleep. It's not going to play out like people think it is. In fact, it's not going to play out the way I thought it was going to play out. Um, if you are listening to what NASA is saying right now, they're expecting very soon for a solar storm, a flare, a storm, from the sun that is going to wipe out all technology. It's going to take everybody on this earth back to the dark ages. In fact, the way it was put was a hundred years in the past. It's going to take us back a hundred years. Now do you see why the scripture says that they are going to fight with swords at Armageddon? Why it says they're going to come on horses? Everything that runs on electronics, I believe the Lord is going to disable. This is serious, people. The Bible makes it very clear 
the heavens will be on fire. The elements will burn up and melt with fervent heat. The heavens are going to roll back as a scroll. <clears throat> you know, when the devil gets people caught up in electronics and gets them caught up in the internet, gets them thinking that this is reality, remove the electronics. Remove all the things today that it, they say make our life easier when they really don't. All they do is, really, all they do is distract. All the electronics today, they elect, all they do is distract you and I and the rest of the world from what is really important. And what is that? Our families, right? The most important thing on, your, on the earth is your family. What do electronics do? What do all the electronics that are available today do? And do you realize that all that has to take place is one solar storm and it will all be wiped out? Everything that runs on electronics will no longer work. This is kind of what we see in the scripture, people. I've often wondered, Lord Jesus, why are they fighting with swords? Why are they riding on white horses in the Battle of Armageddon? Folks, it's very possible that God in His mercy is going to render everybody to have a fair fight. It's not fair the way things are today. It's not fair that one country has nuclear weapons and another country doesn't. That's unfair. But you have a solar storm take place and every single, none of it will work anymore. Now, interesting enough, there's actually t TV shows. There's one out called The Revolution. And the Earth has been uh, basically taken back to the dark ages where they're fighting with swords and in that tv show they actually say that the president and i guess those that are in his cabinet and whatnot are still alive on the earth but they were hiding out and that when they do make their appearance they say we are the new founders of the new america now i don't believe folks that the United States of America is going to be any different than the rest of the nations of this world. I've never said these things before. You know I haven't. But based on what God has revealed to me in His Word, I believe something is coming that is going to surpass and even surprise. There's a surprise coming that even the elite of the New World Order are going to be completely taken off guard. What they plan, their New World Order, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen the way they want it to. I've been really thinking about this and studying this out and really studying the Greek words and the Hebrew words. And I'm finding that this mark of the beast has nothing to do, nothing to do with electronics, has nothing to do with GPS, has nothing to do with a chip. That's all a distraction. When this planet is taken back to the dark ages, folks, understand, there's going to be a people on this earth that are going to uh, receive a mark of loyalty to their master. And it's not going to be a mark, a chip. 
It's going to be an actual mark. It's going to be an actual uh, mark, just like it says in the book of Revelation. If you look at the Greek word, it means to receive a mark, a incision or a branding, much like probably what the Jews received at the Holocaust. Folks, there'll be no time and there'll be no there'll be no electronics, there'll be no uh, technology for people to receive a chip. We're going back to the dark ages in this world. Not only physically, but this world is going back to the dark ages spiritually. That's right, spiritually. What was the Dark Ages? The Dark Ages was, the scripture says, the word of God was not, was rarely given. When there's no word of God, there's no light. Did you know the scripture does not say that day and night came after the sun and the moon were created? Did you know that God created the day and the night before he created the sun and the moon? Did you know that God called light out of darkness and he called light day and he called the darkness night and this was before he created the sun and the moon? So what is the scripture talking about when it says day and night? What is it saying when it when the scripture says you are the children of the day, not the children of the night. Does it have anything to do with the physical night, the physical day? What does it mean in the scripture when it says the day of the Lord? The scripture says that they're going to hide in the caves. Folks. That's the king's. The elite of the earth are going to be hiding out in caves. Does that sound like people that have tremendous technology? No, God's going to disturb their plan. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm, I don't know about you, but it thrills my soul to know that my God is in control. They talk. They, 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 they plot behind closed doors. Oh, but God has a plan. God has a master plan. And they're not going to thwart God's plan. I do believe, folks, I do believe, according to the Scripture, that something is coming that is going to bring this earth, bring the people on this, in this world back back to the dark ages you listen brutality uh barbaric you this world's seen nothing yet you remove technology you see how quickly this earth will become barbaric because the same people that have the mindset to control people with electronics and with technology are the same ones that still want to dominate. Now you go back to the Dark Ages where they fought with swords and bulwarks and, and all these different things that men had back then to fight with, clubs, whatever they had, spears, Listen, folks, the Bible doesn't say Armageddon is going to be uh, jets. It's not going to be tanks. Oh, I feel his presence. I never saw these things before. God's been just recently revealing this to me. No, there's, there's not going to be any jets. It's not going to be any technology. God's going to bring people to their knees. The heavens 
are going to be on fire. That's what the Bible says. The heavens are going to be on fire, folks. The mo- the moon's going to be turned to blood. Are you listening? Now, during the day when the sun's supposed to be shining, it's going to be so dark, it'll be black as sackcloth. There won't be any light of day. There won't be any warmth. It's going to get very empty and chaotic down here. Why would anybody want to stick around? Why would you want to be here? Folks, listen. Have you read the book of Revelation? Actually read it? And read about the seals being released? Have you read what's coming on this earth? It's going to be dark. It's going to be barbaric. It's going to be debauchery. And not all of this can change. All it has to be is one solar storm. Can you imagine? That has become the reality of our, of this generation and the past generation has been technology. But get rid of technology and what do you have? What do you have? Well, first of all, you have a level playing field. Every man for himself. Why does it say that those that don't receive the mark of the beast will be beheaded? Surely by then they've got technology that's... I believe that things are going to go back, not forward, people. They're going to fight with swords. Their vehicle will not be a car. Their vehicle won't be uh, jets. And their vehicles won't be tanks. No, their vehicles will be horses. Laugh. Mock. Make fun. But just think about it. We're already being warned right now. And nobody seems to be taking any notice of it. Science right now is warning the world that a solar storm is coming that is going to bring the world back to the dark ages a hundred years ago, technology-wise. I, I rejoice. Now, that may be a negative for you, but for me, that's a, I rejoice because I'm not going to be in that predicament by the grace of God. This is where I hope to be. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. See, technology is not my future. I'm coming back with Jesus. And he that sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Can you imagine riding on a horse that can go from heaven to earth? Oh, hallelujah. Just because the world is going in back is going backwards. Just because the world is going back to the dark ages doesn't mean you and I coming back with Jesus. Folks, understand the children of light. Think about it. We are more advanced than any technology on this earth. Amen? We're riding on spiritual horses. I'm going to read some more to you. I want you to understand the army that's coming onto this earth with Jesus. His eyes were a flame of fire. On his head were many crowns. 
He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. You suppose those white horses are like the horses on this earth? I don't believe they are. Oh, praise God. Clothed in fine linen, clean and white. Now, I want to read to you, folks, the book of Joel, where the army of the Lord comes down onto the earth. Oh, yes. Praise God. Now, think about this. The earth has been brought back to the Dark Ages. They don't have all the nuclear weapons and the technology and all the things that they once had. Listen to what it says. Oh, yes. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness, of gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people, strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall there be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. This is the army that's coming back with Jesus on white horses. A fire devoureth before them. Behind them a flame burneth. As the land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Are you listening? Before them the earth is as the garden of Eden. It's beautiful. After them it's as a desolate wilderness yea and nothing shall escape them the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses did you catch that horses why is the appearance of them as horses why does it call them horsemen? The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen so shall they run. Are you listening, folks? Now let's go back to Revelation. What does it say? And they that followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Now this is around the time of Armageddon because the scripture says, And I saw an angel standing in the sun and cried with a loud voice, saying to the fowls of the, that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and flesh of men, both free, bond, both small and great. Amen. And I saw the beast, and the kings of the earth, and their armies. Folks, I'm telling you, the earth is getting ready to go back to the chaos. It's going back to the dark ages. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's going back to the dark ages. You just wa watch what happens when technology has gone. Think about it. No technology. And what happens? Just stop and think for a moment. What you think is reality right now is not reality. It's just technology. That's all it is. It's just technology. Reality is your family. Right? Reality is making sure your family's fed. Reality is making sure that you protect your family. That's reality. When it all comes down to it, right, at the end of the day, what is it about? It's about your family. Amen? It's not about technology. It's not about getting up early in the morning, checking your emails. No, it's about making sure that your family is okay. 
And God's going to bring it back to that, where it becomes about the family again. It says in the scripture, the great notable day of the Lord, he will send Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, the children to the earth, lest he smites the earth with a curse. Do you know there's a people on the earth right now that have an ideology to take this earth back to the dark ages? Did you know that? They want to go back to the dark ages. That's right. Islam. And that happens to be the curse that God is sending out over all the earth. Interesting enough, I found that in that word mark of the beast, in that word mark, has to do with a curse. Something that's unhonorable. Something that's a blemish. This army that we read about in Joel, in the day of the Lord, without question is the army that's following Jesus. This is a picture, people. Joel chapter 2 is a picture of the army of the Lord that's coming back onto this earth. This is the second coming of Christ. Are you listening? This is the second coming of Christ in Joel chapter 2. Not the rapture of the church. This right here we read in Joel chapter 2 will take place after the rapture, after the marriage feast. Now notice it says in Revelation, there's two armies following the Lord on white horses. How come two? Because one's his bride and the other are the guests to the, to the union, to the marriage they that were invited to the marriage feast, the marriage supper of the Lamb. Are you understanding what this is all about, people? This is about God's day. This is about the judgment of God. This is about the wrath of God. The day of the Lord. The feast of the Lord. This is righteousness. This is judgment. This is getting the victory over your enemies. Hallelujah. This is great. This is sweet victory. Amen. You and I have had, we've had bitter. It's been bitter, right? We know what bitter is. But the sweet is coming, saints. The sweet is coming. That's why it says here, rejoice, O heavens. Rejoice, you that are in the heavens. Oh, praise the living God. Think about it, people. A new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. The old earth is going to pass away, the scripture says. The heavens being on fire, melting with fervent heat. Now let's read the second coming of Christ. Are you going to be one that's riding on a white horse? Are you going to be one that's following Jesus when he comes back to this earth? Are you going to be one of these soldiers that doesn't break their ranks here in Joel chapter 2? A fire devoureth before them, behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them. Behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. This is not a horse. They're not riding horses that are physical horses. These are horses that are in another realm, folks. These are people. This is an army that's not in this earthly realm. This is a supernatural. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains, shall they leap. 
like the noise of the flame of fire that devours the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array or formation, before their face the people shall be much pained, all faces shall gather blackness. Does that sound like a people that have got technology? Does that sound like a people that have nuclear weapons that they can push a button or they can uh, you know, use some kind of a weapon? No, what does it say? Continue to read. What does it say? They shall run like mighty men, like me, uh, they shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march every one on his ways. They shall not break their ranks. Listen, neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one on his path. And when they fall upon the sword. I don't see any machine guns. Folks, understand what's happening. If the New World Order gets their way, if the United Nations gets their way, every single gun will be confiscated. It says sword. Why are they fighting with swords? They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. The stars shall withdraw their shining. Doesn't that sound just like Jesus says when he talks about the end of the world? The coming, his coming in the end of the world. He talks about the stars withdrawing their shining. Jesus talks about the moon becoming dark and becoming blood. Listen. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. What army? The army we just read about in Revelation. Folks. The Lord shall... Oh, I feel his presence. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army for his camp is very great for he is strong that executeth his word for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible who can abide it now you think about this for a moment the Lord Jesus comes back unto this earth riding a white horse He's got armies with him. Think about it for a moment. The earth has already been brought back to the dark ages as far as electronics. Maybe not as far as knowledge, but as far as electronics. You know, that's the mercy of God. For God to remove electronics, that, that's the mercy of God. It's amazing how man hides behind his electronics. You remove electronics and see how big man thinks he is. Think about it. You got two men out there fighting against each other. Never seen fire before in their life. And all of a sudden, one's got fire in his hands. Huh? Huh? Think about it. Going back to the Dark Ages, people. That's biblical. And I'm glad for it. Level playing field. A fair fight. Oh, yes. A fair fight for a change. Hand-to-hand -hand combat. Sword to sword. We didn't think it could ever happen. How in the world could that happen? It was only 2,000 years ago, people, that things were barbaric on this earth. It's not that long ago. In the eyes of God, it's only a couple of days. Go back 3,000 years or 4,000 years back into the Dark Ages or into antiquity. Folks, understand Electronics is what makes us think we've advanced. 
We haven't advanced. You haven't advanced until you know how to love your neighbor. Until you can love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. And you're not covetous. You're not advancing. How are we advancing? Because we've got technology. Because we can push a button and blow up a country. Come on, folks. Is that advancing? Are we really advancing? No, we're not advancing. It's the lie of the enemy, folks. He's deceiving people to making them think that they're advancing in technology. They're not advancing. They're going backwards, not forward. The ones that are coming back with Jesus Christ riding on white horses, they're the ones that are advancing. We're making our advance. Are you understanding, brothers and sisters? I live in a little town called Advance. And now I know why God put me, put me in this little town. There's another little town nearby called High Point. Lord, how come you didn't put me on the high point where I could see what the enemy's doing? He says, I've put you beyond the high point, son. I've put you on the advance. Oh, my. Dear God, folks, do you understand? We are more than conquerors. If the Lord be for us, who in the world can be against us? Amen? Who? You tell me who and whose army can be against us if the Lord is for us. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Look at this army in Joel chapter 2. Listen to what it says here. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Whose side you want to be on? I wouldn't want to be on his bad side. And who can abide it? Therefore also now. Here it is, folks. Listen. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, with mourning, rend your heart, not your garments, not in the Old Testament, under the Old Covenant. In the New Testament, God says, rend your heart. Tear your heart. Rend your heart. Get real. Turn unto the Lord your God, for He is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and great in kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. God says, I create evil. You must have forgot how many people God killed in the Old Testament. Capital punishment. This world doesn't know anything about cruel. Our God is cruel to his enemies. Folks, you don't even know what terror is. If you think Islam is terror, if you think this is terrorism, dear God, wait till this army comes down on the earth, riding their white horses, following the Lord of glory, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess, folks, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He's not coming to play games. He's coming for conquest. He's coming to take over. He's coming to root out. He's coming to tear down. He's coming to set up his kingdom. Praise God. Now that's something to get excited about. You want to get excited about your iPhone? Go ahead. You want to get excited about your Android? Go ahead. You want to get excited about your new car, your new house? Go ahead. I'm going to get excited about Jesus. I'm going to get excited about his kingdom. I'm going to get excited about what is real, what is true, what is faithful. 
people, don't get your eyes on the things of this world. They're lies. The Bible calls them evil inventions, wicked inventions, inventions of man. Oh, praise the living God. Praise the living God. So you've got to get into the Word of God if you want to have some reality in your life. If you want to have some sense of reality, you better get into the Word of God. You better get into the light. Folks, I'm telling you, there's too many people in this hour, they got their eyes on the false light, the technology. Oh, praise the living God. Praise you, Jesus. Light came before the sun and the moon, folks. Day came before the sun. Hallelujah. The day of the Lord is coming. Are you going to be coming back with Jesus in his second coming? Are you coming back with Christ? Do you plan on coming back with Christ? Are you making plans to come back with Christ? Hallelujah. Are you making yourself ready? Are you going to come back with Jesus in his second coming? Are you coming in those armies? Are you going to be one of those that's going to be accounted worthy to ride with the King of kings and the Lord of lords, to ride on one of these white horses, amen, with a rod of iron coming to bring a judgment, coming to rule upon this earth, to strike terror into the hearts of men, to get them to call on God? That's reality. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's reality, people. That's the reality. The day of the Lord is near. It's nigh at hand. It's a day of darkness, gloominess, thick darkness. But we come to the earth as light. You understand, folks? These robes of white, these linen robes, that's what John saw in the Spirit. He was trying to describe robes that light up. you got to understand, Job, uh, or, uh, John didn't know anything about, all he knew was fire, right, for light. That's all they had back then, torches. They didn't have electricity. They didn't have the light or the big lights we have today like you see at stadiums. John was trying to do it, express what he saw. So he said, the closest thing I can see to white robes is a, a fine linen. That's the closest thing I know of that is what I saw. But what John was seeing was robes. He was seeing people that had become light, folks. They were light. Do you understand what Brother Joseph's saying to you? We are being made light. Glory to God. Light. Hallelujah. The most magnificent, most beautiful garment that Hollywood can display at their most magnificent time of the year, at their Grammys or wherever they want to call it, folks, is nothing comparing, dear God in heaven, to what you receive through the blood of the Lamb, through the blood of Jesus Christ, through His righteousness. Folks, don't settle for this world. Don't settle for this beggarly elements, folks. Forgive, ask God to forgive you. Turn from your wicked ways and understand what God is offering you. Mm. Hallelujah. Therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart with fasting, with weeping, with mourning, and rend your heart, not your garments. Rend your heart, not your garments. Oh, Lord God Almighty, the coming of the Lord, the second coming of Christ, He's coming back. Have you read, folks, have you read yourself how Jesus is coming back? 
He said, I'm coming back with all my heavenly host. Oh, he's not coming back the way he left, folks. He's not coming back the way he left this earth. He's coming back, praise God, in victory. He's coming back in power. He's coming back in power, in glory, in great glory, with the angels and with those that are counted worthy to come back with him. Whose side are you on? Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Who's on the Lord's side? Who's coming back with Jesus? Hallelujah. Oh, my Lord and my God. It doesn't matter what happens to this earth, people. Praise God. When you're already dead, your life is hid in Christ, what can man do unto you? What can they do to you? You're already dead. Your life is hid in Christ. Mortality is swallowed up in life. We're living in the kingdom. We're, sit with the, we're sitting with Jesus in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see myself coming back with Jesus. I see myself coming back with the Christ, the Son of the living God. I see myself coming back riding on a white horse with Jesus to bring judgment on this earth. Those that mock and make fun. Those that, that are arrogant and wicked. And, and those that blaspheme the name of God. Listen, this earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof. It's not the wicked's. The wicked don't own this earth. This earth is the Lord's. And he's coming back to take it. He's coming back to take what is His. You understand? Hallelujah. I'm serving you notice. The Lord's coming back to take what is His. Praise God. And then He's going to renovate. I'm glad that He's going to renovate, aren't you? The Lord's going to come back and take His real estate, and then He's going to renovate it with the fire. Going to renovate the heavens and the earth. There'll be a new heaven and a new earth. The former things will be passed away. Praise God. Hallelujah. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Isaiah began to see it. He started to get a glimpse. He said, the whole earth is full of the glory of the Lord. What are you looking at, Isaiah? What are you seeing? My eyes have seen the king. The whole earth is full of his glory. Oh, yes. Can you see it, brothers and sisters? Do you see the truth? Do you see the truth? Or are you still seeing through the eyes of, of unbelief and doubt and the flesh? Or do you see the way things really are? The Lord is the King of Kings. He's the reigning one. He is the Christ. He is the conqueror. He is the supreme. Do you understand? Jesus Christ is supreme. He reigns over all. And we need to make up our mind who we're going to serve. Whose side are we on? Whose side are you on? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I've told you the truth. What you do with it's up to you. You can put all your trust in the things of this world, but it's all going to pass away. He, but he that does the will of God shall abide forever. Do we even know what, it, what we're talking about when we talk about the second coming of Christ? If we know what the Bible says we do, people... If we read the scriptures and put them together correctly, we can see a picture of Jesus coming back unto this earth. And just have to read Joel chapter 2 and you can see him on the earth. There he is. The Lord utters his voice before his army. 
Watch and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things and stand before the Son of Man. That word in that word uh, where it says the Lord said to Israel, "You knew not the time of your the time of your visitation." That word visitation in, in the Greek is the word inspection. The army that stands before the Lord stands to be inspected. Do you pass inspection? Are you going to pass inspe- Have you passed inspection? This is the time, folks, when the Lord is visiting the general, the commander, the captain, the Lord of hosts, is going to inspect his army for battle. Are you ready for marching orders? Are you ready? Are you one of those that's going to not break rank? not going to thrust against another brother, not going to break rank. You know your place in the body of Christ. You know your place in this army. You're not trying to get someone else's place because that's what envy does. That's what jealousy does. That's what covetousness does. You want something that's not yours. No, you know, you need to know your own place. And if there's anything in you that thrusts against another brother, you're not fit for this army. If you're going to be in this army, you've got to know your position and your place. Hallelujah. Praise God. A glorious army. A glorious army that God is raising up. Warriors. They know their position. They know their place. The beauty of holiness. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus.